So, it's been 15 years since I started my YouTube channel. Some people would probably say something like, Oh, it doesn't feel like it to me. It definitely feels like 15 years to me. Maybe even longer. So we do have a proper review coming out this month in celebration of that, which you of course all voted for, but I think it was about time that I go over my history as a YouTuber. People have asked me about this countless times before, and I have also gone over it before, but I don't know, maybe we should do it again. There's always new people coming into this channel, and most people aren't going to go all the way back to when I actually had hair to find out about how I started this channel. So, let's go into that, shall we? So I started the channel back in 2008. I obviously knew about YouTube before then. I started checking it out in 2006. But I wasn't aware you could actually make your own channel, just no matter who you were. I found that out from a friend, and once I found out, I immediately had to make my own channel. I thought originally that you actually had to pay in order to start up your own channel, which, to be honest, that sounds like something that Google would do these days for YouTube, but thankfully back then it was free. Though, while I started in 2008, I didn't actually upload any videos for a whole year. And when I did finally make one, well, it wasn't all that great. Hey, this is George Edmonton from Headphones UK, and today we're going to be causing the British version of the Joker's uncensored fatality. For those who are younger, you need to bear in mind that it wasn't as easy to make a video just out of nowhere. Video phones had only just come out, and the quality of them was pretty bad, and actually getting the footage off of the cameras in order to actually edit them was even harder. And while smartphones were starting to catch up a bit more with more good quality cameras, they were way too expensive, and I was only 14, so obviously I wasn't going to have one yet. So for most people, the way they did it was using cheap webcams, which is exactly what I used. And, well, let's just say that while I was excited to actually make videos, I didn't really know what I should do. I started off just basically making anything that came to mind, and... Yeah, most of them are pretty embarrassing. Here's my favourite, Brian Johnson. And you know why he's my favourite? Because he's British, like me. Eventually though, around 2010, I had the idea to make sketch videos, and after I got my own camera, which, in retrospect, probably wasn't the best choice for a first camera, because it was definitely made more for touristy stuff rather than filmmaking, it did serve me well for a few years. So with the sketch videos, I obviously was ripping off a lot of other YouTubers, since sketch videos were the most popular videos of that era. And while admittedly mm, they don't really hold up these days, I do think that they do show off my early skill as a filmmaker. I was definitely being a bit ambitious for someone who had no real training outside of just reading books or watching videos online of how to actually make videos. Obviously, I'm not saying that these were flawless, of course they weren't. There were tons of mistakes everywhere and they looked very amateurish. But I think I did a decent job. And I had fun making them, as you can probably tell with the various amounts of things I destroyed in my videos. Yeah, I've got some anger issues. Around 2011 though, I had an idea for a different sort of video that I could make. Self-made music videos. Now when I say music videos, I mean fan music videos using copyrighted songs and footage. But I really liked making these videos. I've always had a particular skill when it comes to really good, well-timed editing. And these were a great way to experiment with that particular skill and help develop it. Plus, it let me indulge in my very out-there music tastes. I mean, what sort of 16-year-old in the 2010s would you know that listens to ACDC or Def Leppard or Black Sabbath? Despite me loving these videos, they weren't as popular as the sketch videos. And even then, when I say popular, that's a bit of a difficult word to use. My friends at school discovered that I had a YouTube channel and started watching my videos, and I was already a bit of an awkward outcast anyway, and when they saw me acting even more awkward and weird on the videos, well, that kind of made me a bit more of a target. So, 
it was a bit awkward, but there were actually quite a lot of people who sincerely enjoyed them, and that was actually quite a good way to encourage me to keep making them. I kept making the music videos for a few years and definitely enjoyed them, but I sort of ran out of steam around the year 2013, so around then I stopped, and I kind of took a break from YouTube for a little bit. However, the seed of what would eventually become my YouTube channel today was starting to grow. As I've mentioned before, in 2007 I discovered the Angry Video Game Nerd, which was a massive gateway into the world of online reviews, which became somewhat of an obsession of mine for quite a few years. I suppose in a way they still are, but I'm definitely not as entranced by them as I used to be. But I did watch a lot of online reviews. The AVGN was the beginning, but there was also the Nostalgia Critic, Linkara, the Cinema Snob, Welshy, the Hardcore Kid, and way more than I can even count. In 2012, I thought I should make my own, though for whatever reason I decided that my first outing should be the Paul and Linda McCartney music video trilogy, that being The Frog Song, Seaside Woman, and The Oriental Nightfish. I have no idea why I chose to do this. Admittedly, that was one of the first VHSs I ever watched. In fact, I think it's probably my earliest memory of watching some form of animation, so it definitely held a quite strong core with me, but I don't know, it's just a very odd thing to want to do a review on. I'd written the whole script and was just about to film, but unfortunately, my little brother, who at the time made it his destiny to annoy the shit out of me, decided to wrestle with me in my bedroom, and during the scuffle, we crashed into my tripod and broke it, so I had nothing to film it with. So my glorious beginning as a reviewer was cut short by an accident. So I put that on the shelf, and as of yet, I've still yet to do it, and even then, making videos was put on the shelf for a while. After that I went to university, so naturally I was a bit preoccupied with other things. But I went for a walk in the woods because I went to Sussex University, which is surrounded by Stamner Park, a national park, and I found this bench that had wood carvings in it of various woodland creatures. When seeing that, I was immediately reminded of Farthing Wood, so I went back home and watched the whole series again. And while I did love it, I did notice a lot of the flaws that I didn't see when I was a child. And this made me think that there would be a lot of potential to do a joke review out of it. So, just kind of spurred on by just really wanting to do it, I made an entire series reviewing the first series of Farthing Wood. I still don't know to this day what it was that motivated me to actually do them, because I wrote down tons of ideas of things to do back then, but I never actually got around to doing it. But I guess I was on a really big nostalgia wave that particular year, because in 2014, not only did I do that, but I digitized all of my Dick and Dom tapes to preserve them, and the Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire remakes were coming out, so I was on a massive nostalgia wave for the mid-2000s. But I made the series, and like a lot of the things I've made in the past, it hasn't held up particularly well, especially the first half of that series, because I was concerned about speaking too loudly and bothering people, so I spoke very softly, and it really made me sound rather boring. Seems what they need is a water purifier. I don't know why I own this. So by the second half of the series, I realized this, and I put more projection into my voice, and that's how I speak now. There was also the fact that I was still using my old camera, which was pretty crap at that point. The fact that I hadn't really been able to find any consistent footage because Farthing Wood hadn't been released on DVD yet. The fact that some of the jokes I was making were a bit too specific and they didn't really fit all that well. But at the same time, I think I did a pretty good job at comprehensively looking at the entire series episode by episode, which at the time nobody had done yet, and I'd argue today people still haven't done because they do overviews of the whole series, not individual looks at each episode. Granted, nowadays, with how quickly things move, it's not really feasible to do that anymore, hence why I'm not doing it for the anniversary video, but I do think it was a cool thing to do, and evidently people agreed because it actually became surprisingly popular. Not massively so, I'll grant you, but it did definitely gain some attention, and it spurred me on to keep doing it. That and I just really enjoyed doing it, so I wanted to keep doing more. I did a few more videos between that and the second series of Farthing Wood reviews, and I think they're pretty good. The Roll Door video is still one of my most popular videos. 
But I did the second series, but I wanted to put more effort into it this time. I wanted to have custom thumbnails, not just have the screenshots that automatically were generated by the website. And that, of course, led me to somebody who has not only become a lifelong friend, but has become invaluable in making this channel what it is today. Rocky. I contacted a lot of artists on DeviantArt to use already existing artwork that they had done to use for the thumbnails for the videos, and most of them were pretty up for it. But the one who was the most enthusiastic was one that I found called Rocky Gems, who had done a really funny bit of cartoon artwork describing the final episode of Farthing Woods Series 2. I was so impressed by both her enthusiasm, her art style, and some legitimately good wit that she had, that I thought that she'd be good to make one custom thumbnail that I really wanted to make, but there wasn't any artwork out there pre-existing of it, so I asked her to make it for me. That, of course, being the one where we recreated the Scarface poster, but with the Fox version of Scarface in it instead, which turned out amazingly well. This, of course, led to something that also helped make my channel what it is today. My mascot. After the second series of Fatherwood Reviews was over, I asked Rocky to do a banner for my YouTube channel, and in doing so, she decided to draw me with a little fox as a representation of the Fatherwood Reviews, and I thought it was a really cute and clever idea. So we kept it. And I also thought that it would be good to have him pop up more in the other thumbnails as a way of having this sort of brand recognition for the channel and just having something cute to draw people in. And evidently it worked, because a lot of people did start watching my videos more after that. But by the time the third series of Farthing Wood Reviews came about, I felt that he needed a bigger presence in the actual show. And so that's where we came up with the Where's Wally style contest, Where is Huck? I bought a plush toy of a fox off of Amazon, and I put him in random shots throughout each episode of series three of Farthing Wood Reviews, and people had to see if they could spot him. And that actually turned out surprisingly better than I thought it was. I thought nobody would actually do it, but people did, and we even actually gave the prizes away, which really surprised me. Speaking of which, Series 3 of Farthing Wood Reviews went pretty well as well. I think it's the best out of all the Farthing Wood Reviews series, because one, looking at the individual story arcs instead of each individual episodes was a much better idea, because one, I didn't really have the time to look at each episode anymore, and two, the amount of cross-cutting in those episodes is ridiculous, so making it about the arcs made it a lot more concise and focused. And so, that was the end of the Farthing Wood reviews, but it certainly wasn't the end of my reviews in total, because I still really enjoyed doing it, so for the next four years or so, I just kept making them in more or less the same way. Huck did start to become more of the central focus in the thumbnails, which I actually think was a good thing because it made them more eye-catching and stand out. There wasn't really much to talk about in terms of further development in my channel, there wasn't really anything new or major I was doing, with the exception of the Ardmay event, which again I'm actually surprised turned out as well as it did. I didn't think it was going to be that popular, but it surprisingly turned out to be one of my most popular series, and one of the things I'm most known for now, so that's pretty cool. But for a while, it was more or less just more of the same, really. Nothing really much to talk about in terms of developments, like I said. From then on, though, the release of videos did start to become a little bit more sporadic. It was a matter of trying to find time and motivation in order to do the videos. Not that I don't enjoy doing them, but because they became a lot more concise and a lot more detailed and a little bit longer, it did take longer to make them, especially with how they became slightly more professional with each video. It meant that making them was a much greater effort with each increasing video, so it made it a little bit difficult, which is why there have been some long hiatuses where I haven't done videos for a while. But I think I made up with that with how much I changed and improved the show in the previous year. Having the show just have just audio from me and not having me on camera was more of a change of necessity than it was innovation, in the sense that where I now live doesn't really have enough space to film in. I know, ironically, I'm kind of disproving that right now, but I still prefer doing it with the cartoons. One, just because I think it makes it a lot more visually appealing, but also, two, it allowed the development of having Hark become a full-fledged character in the show, which I think is actually one of the best things we've done in the show, not only because it allows me to be a bit more creative with the writing, but having some banter back and forth does allow me to have some more jokes in there, but also Rocky does an incredible job voicing Huck. 
from YouTube down to Farthing Wood, there's one thing plain to see. In this entire website, there's no mascot quite like me. She goes for sort of that Nancy Cartwright, Bart Simpson style voice, but it really works for the character and she transforms her voice really well. I really think that this has made the show much more professional and a lot more funny because it is just fun bouncing stuff off of other characters and I much prefer having it not being voiced by me just because it does make it a bit more interesting. Even though I do love doing voice acting and I can transform my voice very well, I think Rocky was definitely the better choice for Huck just because she definitely feels more like the creator of the character than me. We both have equal amounts in terms of how we made the character develop but the actual idea and design of the character was definitely hers, so it made sense that she be the voice of him. And that pretty much brings us right to today. It's definitely been quite a journey, and I have no idea when it's going to end. I have no intentions of making it end anytime soon, because I really like making the videos the way I do now, but let's just enjoy it while it lasts. So, I hope you've enjoyed these last 15 years, and I hope to see you for 15 more. See ya!